If you don't know who I am, I am the girl that brought you Loving Annabelle and that great sex scene. And we're going to talk about Machen in Uniform, which is the movie that inspired me to do Loving Annabelle and do that really great sex scene. I'm trying to think back to when I first saw Machen in Uniform because I was really young. I'm 33 now and I must have been 18 and I was living in the valley and I found a very alternative video store there that had all sorts of foreign movies that you know were not mainstream movies and I saw the cover and the cover was the teacher standing in front of the student who was kneeling in bed and I, I gotta rent this and I watched it and I immediately I fell in love with it and um, connected to it I don't know if it was really about, because I had had crushes on teachers, but there was something about it that was so taboo for the 30s and for Germany. And I, think, I believe it was the first lesbian movie ever made. So it, there's just so many things that were controversial about it. So I just, I fell in love. I really remember the first time seeing it feeling so connected to it that I wanted to make a similar movie. Because I, I just loved the characters. I loved the strict headmistress. I loved the sort of emotionally withdrawn teacher. The student who really just wanted affection and love and to connect with someone. And then the wild and crazy friend. So I just loved the characters. And so immediately I just started watching it every day. I just became an obsessed fan with it. And I just naturally started writing and sort of creating these other characters that were loosely based on that, but characters that I had known in my own life that were similar. Um, so I think the first time I saw it, I was inspired to write Loving Annabelle. I believe the reason that I said that Machen in Uniform was inspired, it inspired me and I didn't do a remake was because my characters, even though inspired by the relationship between a teacher and student, um, were so drastically different. I mean, Annabelle and, you know, the girl, Manuela in the movie are so different. Manuela is very timid and withdrawn and kind of looking for a mother figure. And whereas Annabelle is more confident and cocky and sexual and provocative. So there was just, you know, it, it was just a very different film based on characters that I felt like I knew much more than the ones that were in Machen. I believe in my research, I, I'd like to think that I have some intuition and so I did a lot of research on Krista Winslow, who's the one that wrote the book. And I think lesbians are so desperate for material that will hold on to any sort of, um, anything on screen that has to do with two women connecting. But I believe that for Krista Winslow and Leontine, who directed it, it was really more about a very lonely, a loneliness in two people who just really wanted to connect. I don't really know if it had to do with sexuality, which is why I wanted to do Loving Annabelle. I wanted to take it a step further because I could connect so much with wanting to connect with another woman or be close to, not about sex, but just to have that nurturing sort of um, connection. And because I don't feel like Machen took it to that quote-unquote lesbian level. I think Loving Annabelle, I think it did. <laughs> I mean, judging from the sex, I think it's pretty lesbian. Annabelle's character is so much more aggressive uh, than in Machen, and she's very sexualized for her age. But I felt like it was the only way that I could do it to where the teacher would not be a predator. 
And I felt it was very important because 17 year olds, I'm sorry, they are so these days sexually active, sexually, they're just sexualized. And so if Annabelle is more of the predator, then I feel like there's more of an understanding and a compassion for the teacher because she is, I'm sorry, she's hard to resist. Her character's really irresistible. Well, that's, I think that the 50s version actually had slightly more, to me, this is just my opinion, the 50s version, which is on this DVD, has more sexuality to it. Because I remember distinctly seeing the 50s version, they're in the classroom, they're doing the Romeo and Juliet, and there's something sexual about the student. There's something more sexualized than the little girl in the 30s version with the white night nightgown and kind of innocently getting a kiss goodnight. That in the 30s version felt more like um, projection of a mother figure. Whereas the 50s version, I don't know, there's something about the student that feels a little bit more dykish to me. She's a little bit more I, I, lesbian. My tribute uh, to the 50s version was Simone um, doing a poetry class. So that was kind of my way of paying tribute to that Romeo and Juliet scene, which is obviously, I think I rewound that and watched it over and over again a hundred times because it's just such a great scene. I believe that the 50s version of Machen probably inspired me to go with someone more like Aaron and develop the character more like Annabelle is in Loving Annabelle because the 30s version, um, she's much more innocent. Romy in the 50s version is a little edgier, a little more tomboyish. And so I believe that if I took any two characters from either the 30s or the 50s, I'd say the 50s is most similar to, you know, Diane and Aaron and their chemistry and how they come across. I was watching a play and Aaron was in the audience of the play and I didn't even know she was an actress. And I do, I remember it like it was yesterday, the first time I laid eyes on her and I just fell in love with her as the character. You know, because you write a character, you fall in love with that character. And it's really hard to find an actress that you feel like can stand up in your character's shoes and be what you've envisioned this character to be for years. I mean, I had written, I had been working on Loving Annabelle for, for probably four years before I even met Aaron. And um, I just saw her and I just, it was like, bam, that's her. That's her. I just knew it. I think the main differences between Loving Annabelle and the 50s version of Machen is the extension of sexuality and, and looking more from an outside perspective on sexuality within a school system between a teacher and a student. Um, and also I think the Catholicism is a lot different because that's such a big backdrop of Loving Annabelle. But the essence feels the same to me. I think it's just um, about two people who really connected. I think that the 50s version is so great for people to be able to see, especially young, um, maybe, maybe young lesbians, because I get a lot of emails from like 16, 17 year olds who just express how much Loving Annabelle has helped them be more secure in their own sexuality. And I think if they watch, they're familiar with Loving Annabelle, and then they watch the 50s version, you can just see how much we're evolving, just in a whole of the expression of sexuality and the ability to be able to express ourselves sexually. Because the 50s version is quite sad. I mean, Romy Schneider, obviously, the, the student, um, Need, needs a lot of female attention, but she does have an element of, I think, sexual, you know, um, attraction towards women and just that you don't have to repress it. And that's what's, I think, really good about the comparison is because Annabelle really expresses it and I think therefore is really free in herself and inspires younger kids to be free. Whereas the 50s version kind of keeps you holding it in.
I feel in the 50s version of Machen, uh, I go back to the Romeo and Juliet scene uh, when they kiss. And there is a moment that I remember seeing in Lily Palmer that I was like, she just got butterflies. That meant something. And then it was gone, so it's just so quick. But if you're in tune enough, I think you feel it. Whereas in the 30s version, very different. And with Simone and Annabelle, we obviously see there's a lot more in Simone that connects to the sexuality issue. I remember putting a lot of, I remember when we were making Loving Annabelle, of putting a lot of energy into the sex scene, not really because it's sex, that wasn't what motivated it for me. It was more about feeling that, aside from a few lesbian films, or even films where, I mean, I don't even have to say lesbian, whenever a woman has sex with another woman, feeling like the essence of the passion that can go into that was not really captured. And I wanted to put a lot of time and effort and just visual design into making it feel like a real sex scene between two women. And I remember, I remember it so distinctly. We were talking, they're both smoking. We're talking about the sex scene. And Aaron's like, so, 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 so what, do you, what do I do? What do you want me to do? And I just, I remember taking Diane and I just kind of placed her on the wall. And I was like, just put your hand in between her legs and just move yourself up and back. Just make the hand the, ex I just got into, cause I was not, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I've got to just go for it and say, this is what you do. Just do it. And, um, getting really graphic, not pornographic. You know, obviously I, I told her to squeeze the inside of Diane's thigh so it looked like her arm was, you know, it was very technical. You know, they're not having sex. It was all very staged, but I just remember how hilarious it was just kind of piecing these things together so that it looked real without them having to have sex and it be a porn. <laughs> Because I didn't want to make a porn, but, you know, I wanted it to feel real. I am looking through, I'm looking through some of my old stuff to see if I, ah, here is an original. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, this is, oh look, it was 25 cents to see it. I love it. But this is the playbill that was the play that is, you know, oh God, look at the, there's the headmistress and the teacher. Oh, the teacher's so conflicted and so damn beautiful. Mm. I love her. <laughs> now here, Romy Schneider from the 50s version who I think was very, um, I think did a really great job playing, I call it Annabelle. She did a great job playing Annabelle. I'm not sure when this program is from. It must have been from the late 30s, this playbill that gives quotes um, about Machen in uniform. And I love that the New York Times said it was a beautiful, tender, an artistic cinematic work, one cannot help but sense its unusual quality. The performances of all are deserving of the highest praise. Now this is great. Machen in Uniform, this is from the New Yorker. Machen in Uniform is an extraordinary picture. Nothing has been done like it in the movies and I do not expect that it will ever be duplicated. You're wrong, buddy! Watch Love and Annabelle if you're still around. I'm really excited about uh, the Loving Annabelle DVD being released with Machen because I think people can really see what inspired Loving Annabelle and just how far um, we've come in society.